What's up guys? We are showing you the TerraMaster operating system. This is version 3. I'm not sure how far into the version 3. I'll, I'll check that out in a second. But this is running on TerraMaster's F2 220. And this is the back-end software that obviously runs the NAS and helps you configure everything. So let's go ahead and log in here. And we are in, and as you can see, it looks a lot like an operating system. And that's really great, especially for first time users. You know, before, uh, you know, a few years ago, operating in NAS, you had to be really tech savvy and now they make it extremely easy. So again, you can see it looks like an operating system. Down here, we have our system information. So you can see our device name in it. We are running version 3.0.27. And it shows you how long our NAS has been up. I just turned it on not that long ago, so only up for 12 minutes. You can see that our LAN is connected and gives you your IP address. And we can see that our internet is connected and our speeds and what storage we're running. So we have RAID 1 here. And you can see we have 5.4 terabytes free on that. And you can actually close this down if you don't want it running. This uh, background can actually be changed. They have some really nice backgrounds in here. But uh, if you go up here and you go to a, th a wallpaper, you can change it. And you can also change the theme. Uh, there's simple aero blue and metro so not a lot to choose from but again you can change around if you want wallpaper and then there's this player in here which i didn't see that uh music player theme and video player theme so you have all that on there um also you can set up users you can change your uh language and here if you hit that i it just brings up this info tab again moving over here we have these different things so file manager of course just brings up the files that we have on here i just threw a couple files on here uh, our logos different logos um, and you can actually view them in the nas itself so if you double click obviously it brings that right up and i'm going to go ahead and throw this one in the trash so we hit delete uh, hit confirm and i'll show you why in just one second so anything you delete there is a recycle bin, which is interesting on this NAS. So you can see that that's in there. And you can empty the recycle bin. Um, this is great because sometimes we delete things by accident. Too. So to actually have the recycle bin in there is nice. I'm not specifically sure if it auto deletes everything after a certain amount of time or if it keeps things on there. Um, but again, you just hit empty recycle bin. And of course, it will clear all of that out. Over here we have applications, um, and again I'm double clicking everything in case you didn't notice that uh, to easily open these. So there are different applications that you can download to run on this NAS. Now the application list is not as big as we've seen with other NAS devices, um, which I'll go, uh, which I really go into deep in our review. Um, the biggest thing that I see missing is there's no dedicated backup software, especially for Windows. Uh, there's nothing really set up for that. Um, again, you can use third-party software, but I would like to see a dedicated backup uh, ready and you know good to go for this NAS, but it's just not there. But you do have DL DLNA Media Server, Nets FTP if you want to set up FTP, uh, Gluster, GCC, Build Tools, SVN Server, Java, Virtual Machine, Plex Media Server, which I know a lot of people will use, Dropbox Sync, um, so you can sync between your NAS and Dropbox, obviously, Clam Antivirus, UPnP Media Server, which again, I think a lot of people will use, iTunes server, which again, I think a lot of people use. MySQL server is great if you're running this at, as a small business or something like that, you need MySQL. And same thing with mail server. And then you have download center where you can download things directly to your NAS instead of you know your actual machine. So you have all of that. Um, and again, you just hit to, uh, these are already installed. I sent a desktop, I guess these are already installed. Um, and then these ones, you just click install and it downloads it directly from the internet and installs it you know, right there, good to go. Control panel is where you're gonna go ahead and set everything up. Um, so there's a lot of different things that we can go into. I'm not gonna dive down super deep, but to go into some stuff, um, you know, your users, we have admin, and you can set up different users and permissions and, and, and things like that. Um, you know, user groups and shared folder, you can set up who can access these things. Under network services, um, your network, you can send your device name and the port that it's running on, uh, network interface, obviously you can see we have LAN1 and it's connected and you can see our addresses and all that. And then Wi-Fi, there is no Wi-Fi um, enabled, but if you use, you can actually use a USB Wi-Fi with this, which is pretty cool if you wanna put this thing up on Wi-Fi instead of directly connected in. Um, 
file service, you can see that the Windows file service is running. You can set up Mac file service, FTP file service, and NS, NFS file service. Telnet, of course, you can set up Telnet, SSH, and SN, SNMP. Web server, uh, you can set up uh, the web server and set all that stuff up. So again, this, this NAS is set, set up for a lot of things. Discovery service, uh, of course, you can enable the UPnP service. Storage manager, of course, this is where you're going to set up your different RAID modes and everything like that. So our hard drive, this just shows you your hard drive, um, the hard drives that you've installed. So you can see we have two Western Digital, uh, they're red drives, they're six terabyte each. And, oops, click that one again. And then under RAID, we can see that we're running RAID 1. If we click down here, you can see everything that's going on here. And if you want to change anything, you just hit delete. And then you can easily rebuild uh, the RAID modes. And it supports RAID 0, RAID 1, uh, JBOD, and single drive. So you have a lot of things to do there. iSCSI target, again, uh, you can set that up. Virtual disk, you can set up virtual disks as well. External storage, again, this does have USB ports on it, so you can set up ex external storage if you want. General settings, um, region and language, hardware and power. If you go into that, um, some things you can change is the fan. So we were running on smart fan mode. So if things get hot, it will speed up, you, but you can set low, medium, and high. And one thing you, what I would suggest to, and especially if you're using this at home, is enable hard drive standby function. So if the NAS isn't being accessed or being used, it will put the um, hard drives into standby mode, so less power. Um, probably when we measured normal operation, the the NAS uses I think 14 watts or something, 14 to 16 watts. But when we have it in the standby mode, it's like six watts. So. Uh, you know, you can definitely say power that way. Notifications, you can set up email notifications um, and all of that. So if something's going on with the NAS, you'll get an email. Security, um, you can set up SSL certificates. Update and recovery, um, you can see the version that you're running and you can um, set up updates. And of course you can update from the, uh, you can download an update and do a manual update if you want. Backup and restore, and then you can restore to factory default, and then system information, hardware information, service status, resource monitor, which I haven't really gone into. Um, so this just shows you your CPU, um, and these will obviously adjust. You can kind of see them, uh, memory, you know, and our storage, bandwidth. Uh, it's pretty cool, you can see the graphs there, and processes that's running. And uh, that is basically it for settings. So again, there's a lot more that I could have gone into, but you can do pretty much all, you know anything with this NAS. We'll go into backup, and um, the only thing you have for backup, which is interesting, you can set up the rsync server, and um, so that's for like a lot of Linux back backups and things like that. Um, time machine, obviously for Macs, you can enable time machine, so you can back up to this using uh, Apple's time machine backup service. And then um, you can set up backups to an external device as well. So that is, you can backup data from this, uh, from the NAS to a, another device. So if you have, so you can connect a, hard, a portable hard drive to this, you can back up that way as well. But again, as I said, with rsync and even with mapping a network drive on this, um, there's no dedicated backup software for this NAS. And I just think that you know, so many other NAS companies offer that, uh, especially for Windows users, you know, download their backup software so you can easily back up. It's just not included. Again, I know I can do it a third party uh, backup to a, a map network drive. I can easily do that, but just having their own software, which really would have been nice. Remote login, um, you can set up your remote login um, so you can log in if you're not at home. And then finally, we do have help and this should bring up the help. Um, so, you know, you, there's different things and if you're having issues, uh, you can see what's going on, you know, and kind of search if you're having a problem, you can go ahead and do that. So that is basically it. I think this, uh, the TerraMaster operating system or TOS, and this again is version three, it's really great. It makes it really easy to operate uh, the NAS, especially if you're a first time user. And again, it just looks like an operating system and that's what makes it so great. So if you have any questions about TOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Until next time, catch you guys later.